What's happening, HG Nation? Get ready for a Game Design Wednesday. This one is awesome. So we're just starting our first course. The first day of the course is starting this week. Actually today, Wednesday. Um, what we wanted to be able to, to show you, like yesterday, or last week we actually showed you the, um, the process of what we're gonna do. Today I'm gonna show you one portion of the course and why it's so important. Again, I told you in the Game Design Wednesday, we're gonna tell you about uh, one part of the course. We're not gonna give you the whole course because basically you have to pay and register to become a member of the course. And again, with that, you get the graduation gift of the game we, the game we design during this course, you get a copy of it. Um, the second thing you get is you get a private Facebook uh, page where only members can talk about their games. As they're developing it, you can actually uh, shoot feedback back and forth between other members of the Facebook group and ask them what they think. And this is supposed to be a, a safe zone for ideas. Uh, we will kick anybody out that tries to steal or tries to spam um, these ideas. So we want to help you guys out. And so we will be there with you the whole pro in the whole process. Today though, for the mini sold Monday, or sorry, not for the mini sold Monday, for the game design Wednesday, we're focusing on one part. It's right here. So in here, this is the why we design games. And yesterday, I, or last week, I flew through it because it was not important. I didn't want to focus on one thing, minus telling the Milton Bradley story because it's just so cool um, and how he never gave up. The why is the most essential part of designing games. And the reason why I say that is there will be a lot of pitfalls. You ever played the, the game of life, Milton Bradley's game? It shows all the different pitfalls you'll make in life, well, not all of them, but gives you a lot of different pitfalls you make. There's always going to be pitfalls. And these pitfalls could be um, your something as simple as you get a bad critique. Someone tells you the game is horrible, don't like it, you should have done this. Well, if you have a sure foundation in the why you're doing it, you'll never have to question why you're creating this game. The, the second thing is you'll be able to um, Focus or another pitfall is that uh, say you run out of money, you're producing, publishing this game and you run out of money or maybe people stop buying the game. Well, it's your why that's going to keep you going. You won't just drop out of, out of place and decide I'm done if you have a good why. Now, let me show you a little bit about this why. So you can read this here. There's not much to it, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about why it's so important. So I have a great idea. Do you guys have a great idea? What is your why? Is that your why? I have a great idea. Great. Did you know that there are 300 plus games every month being published? So 300 great ideas. And you're thinking, well, that's not that much. I mean, it's the whole worldwide 300. That's not bad. Actually, it somewhat is because think of it. Most game stores only carry about a hundred games, multiple copies of the games. They pick about a hundred games and that's it. There are a thousand game stores, but most of them pick up the exact same games. And if there's 300 new games being published every month, that means if they even recycle them, only a third of them would make it into the game store for that month. And the next month they'd ship out all those, all those games and start off with another hundred. That means only a third of each month would make it in the store. And you know, that's not even true because that's not even the, the biggest part. It's the fact that it's every month. So most games do not make it. And if you have a great idea and that's the reason why you're doing it, you might want a second thing. You might want to come up with a better why. So look deeper. Let's go on a little bit more. How about I'm good at it? All right. I'm good at game design, but there's a lot of people that don't like mine because they're educational games. I'm okay with that. I'm not there to please those people. I know it's a great idea, but if my why is just, oh, I'm good at it. I can be good at a lot of things. And it won't really take me through. So there are two types of people that every game needs. It needs the designer and it also needs a salesperson. You might be good at one, but are you good at both? So being good at it, at design is great. But if you don't have the other person, it's going to fall apart. So let's not focus on just the fact that I'm good at it or you have a great idea. Let's keep going. Money. Okay. Everybody wants to make money. Milton Bradley sold 45,000 copies of his game. 
45,000 the first year. Problem is, how many games are out there right now? Tens of thousands of games. So there's, there's barely anybody that sells 45,000 copies of a game, except for people that sell to large box stores and has a contract with a lot of these retailers, which is a lot of times it's hard to get into retailers. So to make money, you're going to be working a long time before getting that money, unless you're a big developer. But with these, with your own individual games, independent games, it's really hard to make a lot of money. It's actually really hard to make a living. So you can do it on the side, but it's not really going to make you a lot of money. So let's keep digging a little deeper. How about that? You just like have fun with it. So right here, because I have fun. That is like the best reason to start a game because you're just having fun. But with just having fun, it could succeed or it could fail. And you're not going to be falling apart just because it fails because you're just having fun, right? If the whole world falls apart with your game, so what? You had fun developing it. If you wasted all this time because no one wants to buy it, so what? You had fun, right? The next one is, and this is one thing that Milton Bradley found essential for his development in games is that he had a cause. He wanted to help people. So much like he started printing the mansion of happiness to teach good morals, Milton Bradley had good morals, at least as much as I know. With that, he decided he wanted to go a little bit further. People wanted to forget the recession that they were in. They were trying to make themselves better. So Milton Bradley, he actually designed a way for people to learn the game of life through the checkered game of life and be able to get their minds off the recession and losing their jobs and figuring out how to get ahead in life. And that's what the game of life was there for, was to learn how to get ahead. So that was his cause. His cause was to help people. And the reason why he stuck in it, not just the fact that he was successful, because he went from game design to um, helping people in hospitals to giving away supplies. He wasn't in it for the money, or maybe at one point he had too much money. And so he started giving things away. And of course, his board members, the people invested in him, didn't like that. But at the same time, he was a guy that he had a cause and that's what drove him. Every day he did it because he was driven. So what can we drive us? What is our main goal? If you know historical conquest and you've been around me for a long time, you'll know my cause is to make education fun again. Because a lot of educational games, and I mean no offense to them, a lot of them are cutesy boring, not illustrated very well, and they play them one or two times and then they're done. Historical Conquest is a game that you continue to play. It's got great imagery. It's got great gameplay. So my cause was to create educational games and create a new stereotype for it. Not this cutesy, uh, boring games, but exciting, epic adventures and battles. And yeah, historical conquest is not exactly epic battles because you don't battle miniatures, but in this course, we'll actually teach you how to create a miniature game as well. And we'll bring in experts about that as well as we go. So another thing is, um, if you know your cause, you will be able to know why you're doing this. And someone might ask you at some point, why are you doing this? So I am, uh, I'm going through a situation where I'm meeting a lot of people and people I want to impress. And one person said, why are you doing this? And I said, well, or, or what, what do you do? And I said, well, I develop games. And they're like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I get that response a lot from a lot of people, especially professionals, uh, doctors and lawyers and things that they, they're like, oh, that's nice. Or my parents or my, my mom. Uh, yeah. And I mean, no, no offense to, to what they said. My mom's been very supportive. Don't get me wrong but they don't take that seriously. And then I found out that that's not exactly my cause. It's not just to make games fun or education fun again. It's also to help youth and people learning to retain the information that they're, they're getting. So if I can, if you've seen the pyramid of learning, you retain about 10% of lectures in your memory. If you read, you get, you claim about 20% of what you've read. 30, um, 30% goes to, if you learn audio through audio or visual. So 
with our games and our courses, come to find out we're near the 70 to 90% retention. So that is our new mission. Our mission is to get to 90% retention in all of our products. We want you to be able to remember what you're learning by playing a really fun game. So that's my new cause. That's my new mission. Again, that's part of making education fun, but this is why Milton Bradley did, um, was able to be successful because he found his mission. He found his why. So go through the course, go to your, um, your game design journal, and you'll actually see that this is your game design journal activity. Number one This is where you compare and contrast your, the games of the past with the games of the future. Um, so that's the activity. These are the chap, this is the, uh, chapter, uh, pages, basically information that you're going to learn and input from here. And this is the find your why. So to this week, if you're in the course, find your why of why you're becoming a game designer or game, just designing a game. That is what's going to help you to stay strong throughout the whole course of creating your game and getting it out there and getting it published. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below, join our course and get part of our, um, get to become a part of our Facebook group. It's private. So you can't get in there unless you're part of the um, curriculum and part of the course. And that's because we share in a safe zone, all the information about our games that we're developing, including the game that I'm developing and producing for you guys at graduation. So keep, uh, keep going with this course. I hope you enjoy. Chapter number one, again, I'm not giving you the whole thing because it's like 30 minutes long, 30 to 45 minutes long. I'm giving you just a snippet, just one part of this first week's course. Um, next week is going to be a little bit shorter because I want to keep these short. I want to just get to the point, but I wanted to give you a little bit more information of what we're doing and why we're doing it. This is our why we want to make you successful. So take care and we'll see you next time on a th uh, sneak peek Thursday. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be there here first, uh, family all Friday. We've been really busy, but, uh, stay tuned. We might be coming up with a new episode on family all Friday. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. If you have any comments or questions, add them to the comments below. Otherwise we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Actually take care. Bye.